Welcome to Hot Sauce. Exciting episode. We got Matt Ellis from Open here with us today. G'day, mate. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. So this is the third time that we've tried to do this. The <laughs> first time the recording didn't work. The second time Matt and I just spoke for way too long and then realized that we'd run out of time. So this is a 10 feet three. Um, yeah. The so best we gotta, one, yeah. We've got to stay on track, nice and focused. And we will actually just jump into it because I feel like we've had a lot of this conversation so far uh, already um, in previous attempts. But, mate, um, we really wanted to chat today because I've spoken to you a lot about this in the past, um, when it comes to sourcing, alignment, partnership with hiring managers and leadership is really, really important. Um, and mate, that's something that from our experience working with in the past when you're at Superhero and, and in our conversations in the work that you're doing at Open, it seems to be a big part of your strategy and your, like your value add to an organization working in talent acquisition. I think you know, the nature of being in a tech company is that when you go out to fill new roles or when you first start talking to a hiring manager, that role doesn't exist yet. Or if it did, it's probably evolved so much so that the previous role is less relevant. So engaging hiring managers and being, or I like to say embedding myself in their teams is only gonna um, be more of an advantage come time when I've either got to go out and source that role or put it out to market or a combination of both. Lovely, mate. And I imagine like a good relationship at the get-go with a hiring manager and then finding and feeding good people into their team, it's only going to reinforce that loop and then you get more exposure and a tighter relationship and, and then you help them find better people. So that kind of alignment nice and early is really important. Quite often, when you think you need someone, the idea of what you need and what that looks like is never concrete and, and set in stone. Um, it's always evolving, especially in, in fast moving tech companies, but, but arguably anywhere. Um, so the more you can, I can embed myself in those teams and learn more about their people. It helps when you hire a few people and you, you know the people and what makes them tick, but um, embedding yourself in, in that for me is, is really, really important, knowing the type of work that's going on. Sometimes it's really difficult, right? Like some of the most complex um, engineering languages or like heavy uh, risk and compliance or legal legal pieces, like it's not it's not easy, but the more I can make that effort, then the more, I guess it goes both ways, they can trust me to, to find those people and, and recommend good people to chat to to help grow the business. Awesome. And in terms of how that relationship applies exclusively to the go-to-market, uh, 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 there's the two components, research and, and engagement. When we will focus on search initially, how does that, like what kind of, how are you engage in the hiring manager in such a way that you're eliciting really valuable elements of the search to assist you running that process versus just getting that kind of blanket PD generic, I'm looking for a Python developer with blah. Yeah. Like how, how do you kind of dig, yeah. dig and dig and dig and dig and get to the real core of what they're looking for and then use that to then shape and mold your search? A quick plug, we're always looking for Python developers, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hashtag but, ad, and I'm going to invoice you for that. Yeah, yeah, sponsored sponsor, sponsor content. Um, no, I, I think it's, it's, it depends on, on what you've built over time and where you are. So if you've, if you've put in the hard work of knowing that team, then that's much easier to, to pick it up and run with it. Because in terms of the, the go-to-market or the search, you might have a network of people from previous roles or, or ever. If it's completely from scratch, then um, you know it's so important. Because if you don't understand the requirements and the actual requirements aren't always listed in the that, that PD, right? If you don't understand it, you may as well be wasting like sort of one to two weeks of your time going out and finding the, the wrong people and then finding out the hard way that this isn't gonna work. And sometimes that's okay, like it's not a complete waste of time, but the more you can do it at the start and iterate and reiterate, then it's, it's just like a approach to, to product, right? You wouldn't ignore a bug that you knew was gonna make the platform better. So why would you ignore components of engaging a hiring manager to know, know the role that you're trying to fill or the team that you're trying to grow. And what about, so with that search, right, you get a bit of a grasp as to what's going on. Do you stage your searching? I like maybe pull together a 10 or 20 short list of sorts, present it back, get the feedback, message the correct ones, then use those 
message people to then iterate the search and build off that? Or do you like a bigger push and, and kind of cull? Or is it reactive depending on the role and your understanding of that, that kind of skill set and talent pool? The more strategic or the more um, senior roles, it's definitely a short list and a very, a very short list. Getting that for feedback um, and, and actively working with that, that hiring manager or hiring team to determine that. Um, that's, you know, call it an hour time spent to get that list together. And then let's say that all of those 10 people were really good candidates and you reach out to them. You've actually already engaged your hiring manager on that journey so that you can keep them up to date and say, I know we'll get to this, but a collaborative approach to, to that, they already know who, who we're thinking of chatting to. So when someone comes back or when we need to um, get that hiring manager involved, it's a lot easier because they're already on that journey at the start. And so now you've, you've got that, you've got the search, you're building out your lists of people that you think up. How specifically in regards to the relationship with the hiring manager and the information you can extract from them, how are they influencing what the engagement strategy looks like, be it the platforms that you're messaging them on, what that messaging content looks like, what the, the journey looks like in terms of is it single message, multi-step, are you involving them? in that part of the search or also the sourcing process as well? For a candidate that's going to benefit from that, that approach from a, a C-suite or a co-founder um, for that type of role, you can, you can bring them in and, 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 and help them on, on that journey. It's, it's maybe daunting for some. I, I've had the benefit of working with some really good co-founders and, and um, C-suite where they've got no problem in, in reaching out to good talent because they know the impact of that and that's the most important thing. But, some, for some people, that's really daunting to put yourself out there as a, um, a non-talent person to reach out to someone with the potential that you could get rejected. Um, so taking them on, on that journey and saying it's actually okay and, and, and not only is it okay, there's probably a better chance that um, Mike, who's my co-founder, will get a response than Matt from talent because if that person is as top tier as we think they are, there's probably a bunch of um, generic messages there that, that they're looking that they're look, not looking at or looking at, but there's one message from a co-founder. And that is really the, the nirvana, isn't it, from a TA? If you could design your perfect go-to-market, it would involve really either, um, well, leadership's an obvious one, hiring manager's really great. One that we're experimenting a bit with at the moment, which I think is cool, is like a peer-to-peer. -peer. So it's like trying to build journeys where it might be like TA, initial outreach, into hiring manager, into peer, and then end in C-suite. Just kind of provide a bit of variation. And, and often I think you can learn probably more by chatting to the person that you'll be sitting next to than the person you're reporting into. Here's but, yeah. a super interesting one. I, I probably haven't been as intentional about it, but whenever I've come across it through, you know, when you extend that out to referrals and stuff, like the success rate and the quality of the high is always, always great. Uh, I'm fascinated by having an intentional peer strategy and maybe you're getting one plug in for my plug before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're even, we're even. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I think, um, and, and again, it's, it's potentially daunting and people might go, well, that's not my job um, I don't, what, for whatever reason. But um, as you said, if you can give someone insight to what it's like to work with, with for that company and with that person, and that's a pretty cool um, candid experience with, with minimal effort. Yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again because um, I think it's a relevant example, not because I'm shamelessly plug, plugging what we do. But one, one thing I found interesting, because I, <laughs> I worked in agency for years and now working within a tech company um, and like when I help uh, our end team go to market, because it's my skill set, so I like kind of talking to them. I think like it's really easy to do the traditional sell, like we're Python, React front end, Amazon, data stuff, blah, 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 like this kind of those obvious bits. But I found like when I've gone through that process, sitting with the end team and talking about some of the weirder, um, more obscure parts of the stack or some of the, or, or, or more obscure parts of the problem that we're trying to solve for and often you'll find there's like unique things that maybe don't play a huge part of the role but it can be good signals to the person that you're reaching out to that we care about a particular thing um this is where this example falls short because i can't think of a specific example but 
um, everybody would lean, like if I was an agency recruiter working for us, it'd be like, um, yeah, Python, React, um, AWS, and then AI. That would kind of be the sell from a tech stack perspective. But yeah, there's some weird little kind of things within our tech stack that the right person will get excited by, but that the 90% of the market will probably be like, that's a weird thing to mention. But if you can work out what those like, those sexy little elements are, that can be just a flag, which then tells the candidate that this is an organization that cares about this particular element of the stack or technology or whatever, and can be really good at unlocking those profiles where everybody's running that same generic angle at them. Engineering is a very specific example of that, and I'm fascinated by by that for a few reasons. And I think any engineer could have left a job in the last two years for more money, and a lot of them did, but a lot of them didn't. So it's those parts of, of that, of what you're just speaking about, that fascinate me. What is it about our engineers, and I'm not going to go up to ask and say, hey, why haven't you left yet? But the, the, the logic <laughs> is like, what, what fascinates you? And, and more often than not, I find that it's um, the exciting challenges or the exciting problems they're, they're solving. Um, of course, tech stack's important. They need to know what they're working with. But if you can address that up front in a way that's appealing to, to them, and I'm not trying to paint all engineers with the same brush, but um, I find it fascinating because of that reason, especially over the last two years. You present a good point there because tech stack, everyone can kind of compete roughly in the realm of technology stack, but talking about very unique problems that like Open is solving for and the scale at which they're solving them, it's kind of a relatively niche space. So if you can kind of present something particularly compelling around that, you're not competing necessarily with the cameras and the or the Googles or the whoever's of this world because that's a unique problem to your company. So if, some, if that resonates with somebody, yeah, you kind of, you've created your own space of which you can play and, and, and you're not gonna be um, out-competed in that environment. The likelihood and attract is probably very similar of being attached to the, the product. You're not gonna get insurance obsessed people. You're not gonna get uh, talent or sourcing obsessed people. It's the, the problem that they're, that they're solving. Mate. Maybe one last piece, probably the most important piece. Um, what would be your tip if, if talking to a TA or a sourcer within a company that potentially doesn't have a good or tight relationship with the hiring manager which they're supporting in trying to find somebody, what would be your advice to them to try and create that relationship and then and potentially like um, foster that relationship moving forward? There's really no such thing as um, working with your hiring managers too much, um, always being um, like do it in the right way and, and how, how your work does work. Of course, don't bang down their door and things, but there's no, I don't think there's such a thing as, as gaining too much information and, and working with them too closely because the more you show an effort, I think it's just human nature that people appreciate that investment and, and that will come back hopefully in the, in the form of, of good candidates, good good sourcing, um, good hires, great talent pools. Maybe one caveat to that, I think, is like the closeness and the um, working hard to build the relationships and support them. But I feel like you need to back it up with the quality of work in, in your field of specialism. I've definitely heard examples before where people stay really close, but then they're not taking the feedback and they just keep coming back. Yeah. And then it becomes, you kind of pivot into like a bit of an annoyance v somebody that's actually really listening intently and then taking and adapting that feedback and, and pushing it back up into the flow. Uh, yeah, 100% agree. Cool, man. Um, thank you very much. V, V3, done, tick. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll leave you to go pack for your holiday, mate. I, I'm sure you're gonna have a lovely time and get a beautiful tan. Yeah, thank you, it's very exciting. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, and I look forward to V4. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, buddy, thank you, mate.